Wanderer. Don't you remember your adventure plans, my lady? There's so many local uh -oh. specialties okay. in Sumeru. I want to buy more. Okay, so let's continue with the quest. Uh, yeah, let's let's do the main quest first. Oh, it's up there. It's been a while. Do you have any issues to report? Hmm? You tell her uh, about the situation with the kidnapping. Someone's planning to kidnap Sachin. Goodness. Though I suppose it's not all that surprising. The growing popularity of the extravaganza has given him quite the reputation boost as its sponsor. He's seen as one of these super rich types. Mm. Well, since he's got a target on his back now, Shouldn't you send some people to protect him? To tell you the truth, we've thought about doing just that. However, Sachin apparently prefers to spend most of his time out doing field work, and hardly ever comes back to Sumeru City. No one has been able to contact him. Our only lead is something he once said. <clears throat> Each time the Interdarshan Championship is held, I will be watching from close by to choose a suitable person to inherit my estate. Assuming he remains committed to that promise, then he must be right here in the city somewhere. I suspect that the Aramites in question must have heard about that as well, and decided to come here and try their luck. So, they shouldn't know where Sachin is either, right? I would assume not. Anyway, Mahamatra Saino is still on vacation, so I'll handle this. Don't you worry. A couple of kidnappers aren't gonna get very far in Sumeru City these days. I have my ways of forcing them out into the open. All of that said, if you're interested in Sachin's story, why don't you try tracking him down as well? The sooner we ascertain his whereabouts, the quicker we can act to ensure his safety. I mean, you could task all the Matra and the whole Corps of Thirty with someone's protection, but if the client doesn't show themselves, there's nothing we can do to help them. Fair point. Guess we should start searching for him too, but where should we start? Uh, do the Matra have any information at all on Sachin? None, I'm afraid. He's never committed any crimes or broken academic protocol, so we don't have a very detailed file on him. I've heard that Alhatham has now stepped down from his post as acting Grand Sage and is back to being the scribe again. Maybe it's worth checking to see if he knows anything. Good idea! Okay, we'll head back to the extravaganza venue and see if we can find him. So came here just to be told to find a hate them. I follow the wind. Uh, where's the desk? Where are they? He's always the first to leave after the competition ends, and he never tells anyone where he'll be going. Huh. Yeah, actually, that sounds about right for him. Hmm. Let me think. Um... To be honest, he doesn't seem very interested in the extravaganza, so he probably doesn't stick around longer than he has to. To him, being a commentator is just extra work he was roped into. Do you guys know of any places he'd go after work? The tavern? No, maybe he went home. Oh, maybe. Paimon remembers that his house isn't that far from here, so we might as well check it out. Huh. 
I wonder where I'll hate them would go. Oh, how are they? Scars? Uh, zero so far. Hmm. Yeah, but still those two will need to get first place to go past them. Time to go. Time to go. You two? Oh, Kabe, you're home! Come on in, I'll get the door for you. We didn't hear a peep when we first knocked. We thought no one was home. Well, I can't be too careful. If someone from the Academia came here looking for Alhatham, and I opened the door for them without thinking, before long the whole city would know that I'm living here. You're pretty conscientious about this, huh? So, what happens if someone comes inside looking for him while you're at home? It's fine, as long as I stay in my own room. Anyway, why would someone just barge in here looking for him? Most people have better things to do. What do you think? Who knows what he does in his free time? All that matters to me is that he's out of the house. Do you have a car or something? I wouldn't call it that. He's just incapable of saying anything pleasant at all. I told him how the second round went. I won the lot draw, remember? Because of good karma, of course. My luck's on the rise. But him, being him... Oh, you wouldn't believe what he said after I was done talking! You're always quick to remind me that you're my upperclassman, and yet you do not problem-solve in the manner becoming of an upperclassman. This begs the question of why we attach prestige to seniority at all. What does he mean, manner becoming of an upperclassman? What, am I supposed to earn the title of upperclassman now? And he didn't stop there. He said, I'd encourage you to reflect on why you've ended up having to rely on luck every round. Frankly, it's incomprehensible to me how you've managed to make it to this age without acknowledging the proverbial elephant in the room of your life. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something all Hatham would say. I've had it with him. Every time I talk to him, it's the same way. He finds a way to infuriate me every single time. <sighs> Anyway, the disdain is very much mutual between us, so I'll be moving out as soon as possible. I'm actually packing my things right now. He'll have to get used to doing his own cleaning and tidying from now on. See those perfectly hung paintings on the walls? They're coming with me too. <laughs> if his life wasn't utterly devoid of artistic sensibility already, it certainly will be after today. Wait, you're moving out already? But the competition isn't even over yet! How can you afford it? Well, obviously I can't just yet. I'm just pecking early to get ahead of the game. I've got my new place picked out already. The moment I have my hands on the prize money, I'm going to buy it and move my things right in. It'll take me three days tops to move out of here for good. I now know what I have to do to achieve this goal. No matter what happens in the third round, I will win. I will emerge triumphant. You'll see. Well, we'll be rooting for you. But... Are you sure you'll be all right? Hmm? In what way? Layla said that she thinks you'll get caught up in internal conflict. Meaning what exactly? Oh, don't tell me you think I have serious personality flaws too. Oh, we didn't say that. <laughs> 
at it. You say you want to win, but you also turned Faro's on down when she offered to give you her points. Plus, you took it upon yourself to help those desert foxes. Wait, what's so unusual about all that? I gave you my reasons. I would have felt guilty otherwise. Where's the conflict in that? Why would you feel guilty? <sighs> Come on, there were well, foxes. Well, when you put it's it like that... Yes, why indeed? It's a good question. I guess it's just in my nature. Plus, if I just did nothing, then there'd be no escaping the blame if something bad came of it later down the line. But thinking like that all the time must make your life so exhausting. Not to mention that by helping out, you put yourself at risk. Fainting in the middle of the desert, for example. Was that really worth it? It's complicated. I... Look, let's maybe leave this conversation for another time. What was it you needed all Haytham's help with, anyway? Uh, we'd like him to help us look into Sachin. Sachin? Huh. He did actually mention a Sachin recently. I remember he brought a few documents home that day. He was thinking out loud as he looked through them, making some notes and doodling as he went. He even suggested that I should take a look, but I didn't. Uh, give me a moment. Let me go find them. Ah, this is the one. Here, take it. Uh, you sure he'd be okay with this? Huh, with taking liberties? He's certainly okay with helping himself to my beer whenever he pleases. And anyway, he did ask me if I wanted to read his notes. I didn't see the point at the time, so he just left them on the side. He doesn't leave documents lying around unless he's okay with other people reading them. It's fine, I promise. Cool, if you say so. Okay, let's see what he's got on Sachin. I fetched the documents for you. Feel free to look through them at your... Uh, Sachin was born to a wealthy family and his father, Raj, Rajput, Rajput, was a renowned merchant in Sumeru with many properties to his name. At the age of nine, Sachin enrolled into Bahumana and achieved excellent grades. At the age of 15, he completed all of his courses and graduated first, of, first in class. His accomplishments greatly lauded by the sages. At the age of 16, Sachin ventured out and began to research the local environment and customs. His travels took him throughout Sumer's rainforests and deserts. When Sachin was 33, 23 years old, his father Rajput passed away. Sachin returned to Sumer City to take over his father's business and spent two years there. At the age of 25, Sachin once again ventured into the desert to conduct field research. Records show that he traveled with a caravan and lived in our village for a period of time. At the age of 32, Sachin returned to Sumer City. He looked withered and weary. His mental state in shambles. Much speculation rose amongst outsiders, but Sachin looked himself, locked himself in his room and did not respond. At the age of 33, Sachin entrusted all his properties to the academia and pledged to donate all proceeds to the academia. He then wrote a contract regarding the use of the proceeds and property ownership. The following is an excerpt quoted from Sachin when the contract was signed. A minimum of 30% of all revenue generated from the business will be used to fund prizes for the International Championship, with all which will encourage young projects to actively participate in the competition. I will also be donating my entire collection, the most prominent item which the, of which the diadem of knowledge will serve as a symbol of great honor in the International Championship. Uh, only the winner of the competition may wear it. In addition, the academia is only given the right to maintain and manage my properties. Ownership of them does not belong to the academia, nor does it belong to me. 
Each year, the, when the Inter-Darshan Championship is held, I will keep a close eye on each candidate. If I particularly identify a, with a participant, I will review myself. I will then bequeath all my wealth to this individual whom I, I judge worthy of my acknowledgement. They will have the usage of rights to all assets and proceeds under my name. I hope the Academy will respect any and all decisions made by that person. After the contract came into effect, Sachin returned to the desert to continue his investigations, but there has been no word from him since then. Many claim to have seen him in the desert, but none of such claims have been verified. Twenty years have passed since then. That was a okay. lot of information. Paimon's getting a headache. So, to sum up, Sachin put the Academia in charge of managing his estate and went off to do research, right? He even said that if he really liked one of the contestants, he wouldn't just give them a reward, but his entire estate as well! Oh, that must be worth heaps and heaps of Mora! What? Are you serious? All of Sachin's wealth, that's... more than I could spend in a lifetime, surely. Heck, if I got chosen, I'd be able to pay off all my debts, then buy a new place, and still have cash to burn. I could build another palace of Alcazar's array, except this time I'd make it ten times bigger. Oh, then there's that new project in Port Ormos, of course. The bridge renovation. To do it properly would take upwards of... Hey, hey, snap out of it! Uh, why would he have taken it? Yourself there, mister? Uh, uh, you're right. First I need to focus on winning and moving out of this place. Huh? Wait a moment. There's a loose slip of paper tucked in between these pages. Did all hate them write this? It looks like he was jotting ideas down as he was thinking things over. Hmm. Let's see. Um, two phrases have been circled. Sachin, dead or alive, unknown. And diadem of knowledge. Some of this stuff is just plain incomprehensible. Is this written in some other language? Let me see. Huh. I recognize this script. Hmm, give me a second. <clears throat> Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. That's a rough translation, anyway. I can't guarantee it's 100% accurate. Hmm? There's another, smaller line of text underneath. Uh, huh. Why would he bring that up? Wow! It's so cool that you can actually read this script! We worked together on a project once when we were students. The title was Decoding the Runes and Architectural Philosophy of the Ruins of King Deshret's Civilization. I had to familiarize myself a little with this script at the time. Oh, interesting! So, any idea what Alhatham meant by all this? Huh, <laughs> who knows? The way his mind works is one of the great mysteries of the world. can hear. That's so Balraz made some progress. Yeah, he better catch those crooks. But until then, uh, let's just head out for a stroll. Hmm, little decisions. What could have been going through his mind when he wrote that? Time to go. Wait. The following day.
Time to go. Ah, you're here. Sorry, I was just about to send someone to inform you. I only just finished interrogating the suspects. What did you find out? Well, lots of unexpected details, let's put it that way. The mercs themselves were surprisingly easy to catch. We just had someone dress up as Sachin and they took the bait. But then it starts to get messy. During the interrogation, we learned that they were hired by Sachin's own child. What? Why would someone want to kidnap their own father? What's up with that? It's anybody's guess at this point. In any event, apparently the guys we caught are just the tip of the iceberg. Most of them are still snooping around outside the city. We're diverting manpower as we speak to try and round them all up. Would you like to come along? Sure! Let's go get to the bottom of all this! Da ist die Sache. Okay. Oh, but it's far. Is it just outside the city? I thought it was nearby. Go. Oh, my mom is dead. Uh, are you sure this is the right place? Something feels off. I'm positive, but I don't understand why they're all unconscious on the ground. We got more company. Look, we were just doing what we were paid to do. You're punishing the wrong people here. You want the real culprit? It's this guy. He hired us to kidnap Sachin. <clears throat> what happened? Should we know his name? Wait, you mean you aren't with them? First, there was this flying brat. Didn't bother asking any questions, just started throwing punches. After that, some guy wearing green came along and interrogated us for a bit. I've got the confirmation I needed. This is the one who masterminded this whole plot. Jawani. Sachin's son. If you have any questions for him, now's your chance to ask them. When you're done, I'm arresting them all and taking them back to the Academia for further interrogation. <laughs> what do you think? Twenty years ago, we upped and left to go and live a carefree life, not giving a second thought for my welfare. As if that's not bad enough already, he went and put his entire fortune in the care of the academia, along with a contract saying that one day he'd pass it all on to a genius he admired. That's my inheritance. By rights. You expect me to sit back and watch it go to someone else? If he won't give me what's mine, I'll just have to take it from him. You were you seriously planning to... Of course! Didn't he say he would be here somewhere, watching the championship from the shadows? So, I figured I'd get some people to nab him. Then I make him change the contract. And if the Academia doesn't agree to hand over the goods, I make him publicly announce that I'm his chosen genius. So, did you find him? No. The old fart knows how to stay hidden. I'll give him that. He's probably cooped up somewhere, watching all this go on, and laughing to himself. <clears throat> I already thought he'd gone mad 20 years ago. And who knows what a madman's truly capable of. What do you know about the diadem of knowledge? Diadem of knowledge? You mean that thing he donated to the Academia? Well, I can tell you that it's very expensive. He sold a lot of assets to purchase it back in the day. <laughs> Weird things started happening after he brought it home, too. For example, sometimes we'd hear a high-pitched voice coming from the storage room. 
Also, before donating it to the Academia, he once shut himself in that same storeroom and researched it non-stop for days. Something was already seriously wrong with him by that point. Nothing he did shocked me. What do you mean, something wrong with him? I only have a vague memory of it, since I was very young at the time. But I have the impression that he went out into the desert for research and didn't return for many years. When he finally did return, he was a changed person. He would mumble incomprehensibly and write essays day and night. I asked if I could see what he'd written, when he chased me out of the room. Later, he went out somewhere and took his written essays with him. When he got back, he signed his contract with the Academia. Part of me wonders whether he'd already stopped being my father by that point. Perhaps the man we called Sachin was a demon from the desert who was wearing his skin. Uh, okay, you can stop now. You're creeping Paimon out. You can believe me or not. Doesn't matter to me. I told you all I know. But if you do see Sachin, tell him this for me. Whatever it is that he's researching out there, he'll always be garbage in my eyes. You finished? In that case, come with us. Well, we finally caught the guy behind all this. Thanks for providing us with the critical information. Do you still have any lingering concerns? Did that have knowledge? Yeah! Oh. Alhatham's notes do mention that item! Scribe Alhatham looked into this matter. Hmm. Understood. Well, if you believe there to be an issue with the diadem, I'd suggest contacting the organizers and getting them to pause the competitions while we investigate. That makes sense. Okay then, let's get back to the venue. We need to tell Karina what's going on. Well, technically... The event could go on now, without any issues. The guy is arrested. Karina, oh, you're finally back. Where have you been? I looked everywhere for you. The third round's already started. Oh, we missed We were it. out capturing some bad guys who wanted to kidnap Sachin. But that's not important right now. We think there might be something wrong with the Diadem of Knowledge, and we'd like to investigate it. The Diadem? That seems unlikely. The Diadem of Knowledge has been used in every extravaganza over the last two decades, always without incident. Why has this come up now? Some new information has come to light. Hmm... This is pretty serious. Let me think. Okay, here's the situation. The Diadem is currently in Mount Ima Forest. We moved it there before the third round began. In the third round, contestants have to go into Mount Ima Forest, find the Diadem, bring it back, and place it on the stand. The first person to do this gets four points. Considering how close the scores are between our contestants, whoever wins this round is very likely to be the winner of the whole competition. As such, I suspect competition to be very fierce. You might not make it in time. So there's no second and third place now? We have to give it a shot? I'll mark the Diadem's location for you. Please head there immediately. Let's hope nothing happens. Alright, let's go! That's weird. The locator stopped working. Is the forest oh. interfering with it? Ugh. Let's just go grab the diadem. Why this year? Hmm. What happens if it draws? Either cat guy or I don't remember who was the other one with no points. Get it. There, there's two, two more people with four points. 
Love K. There doesn't seem to be anybody here. Maybe everybody's together. like Layla has seized the diadem. But getting to the goal won't be easy. Can they fight each other? is heating up. Oh. And here's Kave bringing up the rear. Someone to inherit my estate, and with it, my research. Come, Kave. Come to me, my child. Why on the other years you never How do you know my name? Mind. Who are you? I am Sachin. Well, to be precise, I am but a fragment of Sachin's mind. Fate is a curious thing. Seeing you reminds me of another I once met. But you are made of sterner stuff than he. More cognizant of the trials and tribulations of this world. It is you who are worthy to inherit all that I once owned. We meet for the first time, children. But what I mean to say now is of utmost importance. So please, pay attention and bear witness. You have all performed outstandingly in this Interdashan Championship. The Academia has many rare talents among its ranks, and you are the creme of the creme. But if I were to choose a successor, I would choose you, Kaveh. Not only because you were victorious, 
but also due to our similarities in character. Uh, me? Similar to you? Why, yes. Both of us have the misfortune to be idealists, and that is the source of our misery. Twenty-eight years ago, I came to the desert and lived there for eight full years. What do you think I saw there? Alas, endless strife and slaughter. Conflict over water sources. Robbing of merchant caravans. Exploitation of the people relentlessly, day after day. Beyond the wall of Samiel lay a completely different world from the one I knew. The things I witnessed there tormented me greatly. I wished desperately to find a way to save them. So, did you find a way? As a Vahumana scholar, I tried to use Vahumana knowledge to find the answer. I researched history and anthropology, performed countless experiments on human nature, and even sought out the scholars living deep in the desert who called themselves the Lost Darshan. <laughs> but in the end, I found that the answer I sought simply did not exist. It was not possible to simply assign blame for these transgressions to any one party, for the sins are carved into humanity's very nature. Our nature begets conflict, and conflict begets destruction. This is the inexorable truth. The aim of my research was to draw lessons from history. But what I discovered was that history offers no such guidance. Things can only ever go from bad to worse. After this realization, I could no longer see the meaning in anything that I had ever learned. Consumed by an overwhelming sense of emptiness, I could no longer bear to face life. And so, I decided to bring my life to an end. But before I went through with it, a strange twist of fate led me to come into the possession of this diadem, which has the ability to preserve part of one's consciousness into it. I placed my experiences before requesting that the Academia manage my estate. As I thought, the contract you signed with the Academia was in essence your will. But if you'd given up hope on this world, why did you feel the need to do this? I mentioned that I had performed a great many experiments concerning human nature. You may regard this as the very last experiment of them all. The Academia has no shortage of genius talents, nurturing the brightest minds of every generation. And so, with a handsome reward to draw out the worthiest of individuals, my hope was that one day, I would find one who could untangle the mystery of human nature once and for all, and help to move the world onto a better path. I see. So you desired a successor who was not only a genius, but who also understood the suffering of ordinary people. Such a person would have a clearer understanding of humanity, society, and the world. Huh? But did you ever consider that wealth numbs the human heart to the pain in the world? Even an idealist may be incapable of following through on your wishes after inheriting your wealth. You are highly intelligent. Yet you are not the sort of person who would understand my line of thinking. To me, this is also part of the experiment. Part of my investigation into human nature. Whether my successor suffers as a consequence of my research, or succumbs to an indulgence in pleasure-seeking, my research will have progressed. I grieve the fundamental sickness of the world. I regret the unbearable weight of its history. And I lament the research that I failed to complete. And this, Kaveh, my dear child, 
is why you will be of great utility to me. You're... You're absolutely certain that you want to give me everything you owned? For me to do with as I please? I have faith in what I see in you. Now wear the diadem, Kave, and complete the journey that I could not. <sighs> will the verdict I reached cause you suffering? Or will this newfound wealth numb your heart? I look forward to your answer. All of my research materials are being stored at all. Huh? I've heard enough! My life's enough of a mess already. The last thing I need is more suffering. Keep your mora. I don't need it. Didn't you say that you saw a lot of people in pain? Well, if that's the case, then your wealth can go to them. I guess that'll be the end of that. Are you all right? Any physical discomfort? I'm... fine. <sighs> Thanks, Tainari. Don't worry about me. Don't push yourself too hard. Kave? Kave may have broken the diadem, but he successfully completed the task prior to that. According to the rules, this makes him the victor of round three. Points-wise, this also makes him the winner of the Interdarshan Championship. As the champion and Sachin's personally designated successor, Kaveh has obtained the rights to inherit the entirety of his estate. For the avoidance of doubt, can you confirm that it is your intention to donate all of Sachin's wealth? Like I said, he thought that the world is a bad place. Well then, let's use what he left behind to change it for the better. Rejecting the world will achieve nothing. He and I... We're not the same. All right. As the scribe, I will make a record of this incident on file. The sages will contact you in person for details on how exactly Sachin's estate is to be used. That sounds fine. I don't know if his research findings were right, nor would I know how to finish his research for him. But what I do know is that by ending this here, no contestants will have to suffer. We won't be the last. There will be more championships to come, and countless future scholars will follow in our footsteps. Sachin's words can only cause pain, but not anymore. No one else has to hear them now. We're all scholars here. I know full well that shutting down his views like this is autocratic and arrogant. Fine by me. I'll bear that responsibility. It's the least I can do. And, well, it's the only thing I can do. Hmm. Well said. What you've expressed is a sense of justice and idealism that many aspire to, but few dare follow through with. I say this despite the fact that, in my view, it's quite ridiculous. You have long been aware of what your flaws are, but your pride alone prevents you from admitting it. Nevertheless, your perspective is well suited to appearing in a victory speech. Contestant Kaveh, on behalf of the organizing committee, it is my honor to congratulate you on your victory. What? Please, I don't need your insincere praise. Anyway, this isn't the time or place for debates. Keep your commentary focused on the competition, not my views. Congratulations, Kave. Also, you'll need to prepare for the award ceremony. Looks like the ceremony will be held at the main venue. Let's head over and check it out! I think that uh, they could be broken so easily. It was kind of risky to have them fighting over it. It wasn't very fair for them to be fighting over it because 
the contest wasn't restricted to visual holders. Thank you all for your excellent performance. And that brings this year's Interdarshan Championship to a close. Finally, it gives me great pleasure to invite our champion, Kaveh, to the stage to receive his award. Typically at this point, we would crown our champion with the diadem as well as presenting them with their award. However, we have just received word that Kaveh has inherited Sachin's estate and made the decision to donate it all to charitable causes. <gasps> Sachin's estate is getting donated? So much, Mora. And he gave it all up? Kaveh's generosity will give many struggling families the chance to change their lives for the better. Of course, without the diadem and prize money to present, this makes the award ceremony a little more concise than expected. Would you like to say a few words, Kaveh? There's the card. I'm sure many of our audience, like myself, are curious to learn why you decided to give all this wealth away. I'm... Not entirely sure what I should say under these circumstances. I'm glad to have won, even though I'd say luck played a big part in that. As for why I want to give the Mora away, I don't support Sachin's views, and I don't want to take his Mora. With a lot of things in life, people need to experience them for themselves. It shouldn't be up to one person to make a judgment on. Not him, and not me either. Anyway, this isn't really the time and place for such weighty and complicated topics. So, um, I guess that's all. I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. Oh, Kaveh, uh, just one moment. While this is a short and sweet award ceremony, we do still have a prize to present you with. Please take this limited edition Genius Invocation TCG card. Additionally, your champion status will be logged in your record. This means that the Sages will give priority consideration to any future project proposals you submit. All right, I'll take the card. But as for project proposals... Uh, uh, forget it. In that case, I declare the award ceremony over. Let's give our champion Kaveh one last big round of applause. I still don't really get it. The sum of Mora would have been enough for me to live in luxury for my entire life. That just means you're not strange enough to understand the way that geniuses think. Come on, we've still got the whole Wisdom Gala to explore. Yeah. <sighs> Where's Glad everybody? that's over. I think I'm quite good at giving speeches, but this one was just so tiring. Do you mean that you're still exhausted from the competition? Honestly, you don't look happy at all, but whatever else happened, you're the champion, you know? Don't you think you should be proud of that? I suppose... <sighs> oh, wait. Sino said he wanted the card, didn't he? And now I have it, right here. So you're gonna give it to him? But if it's a rare one, you should be able to make a tidy sum of more off it. Why would I do that? It's of no use to me whatsoever. I may as well just give it to him. Uh, could you pass it on to him for me when you next see him? So I'll probably just wait a while. Whoa, this is it a super bite. big deal. You should do it yourself. Come on, let's go find Sino. Huh? But I was gonna rest for a while longer. Uh, uh, hey, hey, stop pulling my hair. What you looking at, Sino? I'm still thinking about the Sachin issue. What brings you here? Well, they gave me this limited edition Genius Invocation card, and I figured you'd have more use for it than I. But it's a limited edition. Are you sure you want to give it to me? What else would I do with it? I have no use for it. <gasps> but it's limited edition. Kaveh, are you in trouble? You don't have to do all this. Just tell me what's wrong and I will help. 
Oh, that's not what I meant at all. Yes, I have all sorts of problems, but that has absolutely nothing to do with this card. I'll figure my own issues out by myself. All right. In that case, I accept your generosity. But now that I realize that you have no concept of its value, I cannot simply take it from you. How about this? I shall buy it from you at a fair price. Namely, the price that the previous limited edition card sold for. Oh, come on. It's just one card. How much could it really be worth? One million more, at the very least. Huh? How much?! A million more?! If you feel that's too low, I can go a little higher. One million more for a card?! But you already have a whole bunch of these, uh, shiny ones, don't you? I saw your deck last time we played. Not every card is this valuable, and some cards are exquisitely designed, but not rare. Huh. Well, I guess they must pay you plenty to be General Mahamatra if you're splashing out on things like this. But really, it's fine. I'd feel bad taking Mora from a friend. Don't feel bad. I save a lot. I can spare the Mora for this card. Uh, you don't spend all your savings on your hobbies, do you? You should watch that, you know. You definitely don't want to end up borrowing money in a moment of impulsivity. Living with debt is miserable. Sounds like you're speaking from personal experience. I guess you've been through a lot? <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. In that case, maybe you're the one who should be listening to your advice. In any case, I, Sino, will take this precious card, and it shall join the Deck of Destiny. Kave, come with me in a few moments to collect the Mora. Thanks to you, I have achieved my goal for participating in this tournament. All right, if you insist. Far be it from me to refuse your courtesy any further. Well, at least I'll be able to keep on top of my bills this month. Maybe I'll even have some left over. In fact, let me treat you all to a meal later. Bring Tainari and Kale, too. Well, this is what they call all's well that ends well. Hmm. Paimo wonders how the other contestants are doing. Let's go check in with them, shall we? Since we're guest commentators and all. Oh, they're done. Hmm. Well, here. Not about the art mark anymore. Time to go. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong taking advice from me on what to wear. Back in the day, my fashion style was considered cutting edge by everyone in the academia. Really? Well, then, uh, sure, M Madam Farzan. Maybe you could pick out a few fashionable outfits for us. Farzan! Nilu! <gasps> Even Dia and Candace are here! What are you all up to? Candace and I bumped into these two while we were strolling through the streets. Madam Farzan here is pretty friendly. When she heard that we were buying clothes, she decided to give us some help. Hmm. I don't really see anything I'm familiar with. Never mind. We can purchase some textiles and make the clothes ourselves. Let's go with the plain fabric as our base. And embroider red and pink flowers on. Oh, and some green leaves. Oh, wait a sec. Uh, you sure that's the latest style? That sounds a lot like what the older folks back home would wear. Don't worry. This style is a timeless classic. Uh, no thanks. This is actually sounding pretty weird. Wait, wait, wait. Madame Parzan's right. That style is a classic. It used to be mainstream fashion. But these days, there are some other options too. If you don't mind, how about I pick some clothes out for everyone? It's not often that we get to meet up, especially since Candace rarely makes it to Sumeru City. Also, I know a few places where I can get a great bargain. Sure. I'm happy to leave it to you. I'll come with you to have a look. 
one always has to keep on top of what the youth of today are into. Madame Farazon? Uh, come quick! She's over here! Hm? Who are you? We're new in the Academia. We saw all the amazing things you did during the competition. Do you have any classes we could sign up for? Ahem. <clears throat> of course I do. And you're both very welcome to join. That's great! We can't wait. Um, what's your area of research? Precision mechanics? I'm from Haravatat. Uh-huh. But you seem like an expert in machines. Wait, sorry. I remember now. You were representing the Haravatat Darshan in the championship. Oh, their classes are so boring, though. I'm sorry, ma'am. Let me know if you run any other classes in the future. I'll be there. <laughs> I knew it. What about you? Aren't you going to leave with your friend? I think you're amazing, Madame Farazan. And I'd like to learn from you for a while, if possible. I can take the class you're teaching as an option, even though cross darshan lessons might be a little tough to arrange. But I look forward to learning from you. I see. You're a good egg, child. Don't worry. Study under me, and I promise you, you will get the best teaching available. Thank you so much, ma'am. Well, I won't disturb you any further. See you in class. I don't quite understand what happened there, but congratulations, I think. Traveler, Paimon, would you two like to come and pick out some clothes? Sorry, we can't. We've got to meet with Kaveh later, and we have to check in with all the other contestants before then. Oh, by the way, have any of you seen Hat Guy or Layla? I don't know where Hat Guy went. We just saw Layla not too long ago, though. But she was hanging out with some other Ratahoa students, so we didn't get a chance to speak with her. Are you gonna go and see what she's up to? Ratahoa students? They must be the ones who voted for her to enter the competition, right? Oh, she didn't end up winning, so Paimon wonders how they feel about that. Let's go take a peek. If you don't come to Sumeru City often, classic floral designs aren't a bad choice. Those don't really go out of style. And of course, since you're putting this on your body, you need to consider the type of fabric the clothes are made from. Some materials might look stunning, but they can be terribly uncomfortable to wear. Agreed. After all, is fashion not the constant phasing in and out of classics? In that sense, you could always consider the style I suggested too. Wait, uh, sorry, ma'am, but I think it could be quite a while before the style you recommended comes back into fashion. I actually think the style recommended by Madame Farozan is quite beautiful. Isn't it just? You have a discerning eye, my dear. Okay, so... Is it way up there? Time to go. I'm sorry, everyone. Hmm, I could have done better in the third round. Oh, stop it. If you're going to beat yourself up after doing as well as you did, how bad does that make us look, huh? Heck, it's not like any of us had the guts to enter the championship. I didn't see the whole thing, but you were the only contestant who scored points in both the first two rounds, right? And I heard that you actually found the diadem first in round three. <laughs> you came so close to winning the competition. Aw, oh, I just got lucky, I think. That can't be true. You had some really stiff competition out there. The renowned Tainari from Amorta, even Sino the General Mahamatra was there. You're amazing, all of you. Getting points off them is a huge achievement. The way I see it, people aren't exaggerating one bit with the nicknames they give you. You are a genuine genius. 
Oh, thanks a lot. But I really don't think I qualify as a genius. In the second round, for instance, I dozed off and somehow found myself beside the device when I came to. Ah, oh, come on, don't be so hard on yourself. We've decided we're taking you out to celebrate and that's final. Let's go. Cheer up, Layla. The rest of today's all about you. Looks like things are going well for Layla. This is great! Hmm. We haven't seen Hat Guy since the end of the competition. Eh, oh well. It's almost meal time. We'd better go meet up with Kave and Sino now. Well, we still don't know exactly what his plan was. Uh, I can't believe it. But in the end, no one was disappointed in me. Ah, oh, what a relief. Finally, ooh, I can get some good sleep. <laughs> Time to go. Let me see, did they all have... They always had those... ...things on their caps. I never paid attention that they were different. Just now I noticed they... ...each had from their respective darshan. Are you sure you have enough to cover this? Don't blow it all at once. <laughs> Don't worry, I budgeted very carefully, and this is well within my means. Anyway, I've lost count of how many times you've treated me. It's high time I return the favor. Oh, Traveler, Paimon, over here! Ooh, look at all this! Good food, here we come! I heard that you went to see the other contestants. How's everyone doing? Farazan found herself a student, and Layla's classmates are bowled over did. Uh, we couldn't find Hat Guy, though. Who knows where he's gone? Al Haytham's gone missing in action, too. <laughs> the one time I'm actually in a good enough mood to treat him to a nice meal, he disappears without a trace. <sighs> that guy. Where the heck could he have gone? I still have questions about that note he left. <sighs> well, whatever. He can do what he wants. Now, let's eat. You won't share a delicious meal. You shocked me a little when you hurled the diadem to the ground. On further reflection, of course, it made sense, but at the time I was expecting at least some amount of deliberation. Sachin's voice started talking to me inside my head from the moment I picked it up. I could feel his emotions, too. It was a mix of despair and horror swirling around inside my mind. He bombarded me with his ideas relentlessly, like he was trying to brainwash me. It gave me a splitting headache that only got worse as he went on. Like I was saying at the time, his views are not necessarily completely without value. But if all his research does is lead to misfortune, then we're probably better off without it. If his forbidden research were to spread in a harmful form, and cause people to suffer, the mantra would step in and ban it. I think you did the right thing. I suppose another way to approach it would have been to claim that you agreed to inherit his research, but give up the research as soon as you've inherited the wealth. Uh, but that wouldn't have been your style. I won't comment on his theories or experiments, but I don't believe that he was careless in his choice of candidate. He chose you. That means he knew what he was doing. Perhaps. 
I just think that if you accept someone else's things, you should honor their wishes. That's a good thing. It means that you have integrity. Thank you, oh my god, thank you. See, you get me, Kale. It's a good thing Al Haytham isn't here right now. He'd be quick to explain why you're wrong. Seems like you always include him in the conversation, <laughs> even when he isn't here. Yep, no dinner with Kave is complete without a few words about Al Haytham. <laughs> I sense that Al Haytham has in fact been here with us all along. He's here? Where? Why didn't you tell me? He lives rent free in each of our hearts. Uh. <sighs> oh, that was horrifying. It literally sent chills down my spine. Good thing you didn't say that before we started eating. That would have killed the mood in a heartbeat. All right, enough about all Haytham. Tainari, did you achieve what you wanted out of the championship? I did. In the first round, in fact. Word of mouth proved very effective. I spoke to a handful of people, they told their friends, and so on. Now, a record number of people have signed up to attend the next lecture. Oh, are, are you free next month? You should come along, maybe even say a few words. About what? I don't know the first thing about anything Amorta-related. Just play to your strengths. For instance, you could talk about the distinguishing features of rainforest architecture. Or ask everyone not to chop down too many trees the next time they're building a house. Oh, well, that's no problem. Sure, I'll make time. Has everyone had enough to eat? I can order more if anyone's still hungry. I'm full. Thanks. I'm super full, too. <sighs> if only we could eat like this every day. <laughs> yeah, we should do this more often. Work will always be there, but seeing friends is important, too. This is a good restaurant. Let's definitely come here again. Sounds good. We should pick a few other places as backup options, though. There are other good places around here, too? Oh, and don't forget to invite us if you go. There's nothing we love more than good food. Kave, do you have plans after this? I was thinking of maybe going to the academia for some alone time. Nothing set in stone, though. Why do you ask? Mm, since everyone is free, why don't we mm. play a few matches of Genius Invocation TCG? Eager to show off your new limited edition card, are you? Not to show off. This is my way of thanking you for your help. Only my best friend will have the honor of seeing this card's debut play. All right, sure. I didn't bring my deck with me, though, so I'll need to borrow one. Actually, Master, I made a new one a few days back. <sighs> Don't tell me you've been spending all your study hours playing cards. Come on, no need to be so stern. They do say that your innate interests are your best teacher, don't they? Mm, okay, but I can't read really mm, Since everyone is eager to show off your new... Not to show off. This is my way of thanking you for your help. Okay. All right, sure. I didn't bring my dad. Actually? <sighs> Don't tell me. Saying? Come on, Skarmush no need to be so again. stern. They do... He'll be outside waiting for us. Sachin's research. Oh, right. Yeah. Sachin said that he placed his research materials at somewhere beginning with. Ah. Uh, but Kave smashed the diadem of knowledge before he could finish. Huh. It might be dangerous if someone finds his old research stash, right? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, where do you think it could be? Our village. Holy smokes, you're right. He said he spent all the time researching in the desert, didn't he? So it's very possible that that's where he'd leave all his suits. All right then, let's head off to Aru Village and try our luck. 
teacher have talked to Candice? Maybe somebody in the village will know. Didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, hey, Thumb. What are you doing here? And what are you reading? Are those... Sachin's notes? Yes. I came across his profile while I was organizing some documents and became interested in his research. If it wasn't for that, I never would have agreed to being a commentator. I had a hunch after seeing the fragment of his mind, and sure enough, I came here and found his research. Wait! You've read it already? Are you alright? How do you feel? I think you may have misunderstood something. The reason Sachin chose that architect to inherit his research was that only he could really empathize with both the calamity and the humanity that these notes seek to convey. Only one who resonates with these sentiments would suffer and begin to think of history as bleak, the present as perplexing, and the future as pessimistic. Empathy is a double-edged sword. Clearly, I am not the same sort of person as Sachin was. Empaths have many friends, and their wide social circle comes with certain societal advantages. But this also makes it hard for them to achieve their goals. Why is that? All important things in life involve other people. As such, it's extremely difficult to live a life that causes no harm whatsoever to others. If you really want to achieve your goals, you have to be prepared to make enemies along the way. Not everyone can deal with that reality. And that reality is like the material here. Objective, heavy, negative. But, at the end of the day, for all these experiment results and conclusions, it's just one person's perspective. Sachin's. So, what are your thoughts now that you've read it? As a scholar, Sachin was without a doubt a genius. He laid the blame for the darkness in the world squarely on humanity, experimented extensively with reliable results, and drew logical conclusions. In that sense, one might say his views were correct. So, people are bad? And things can only ever get worse? All of that's true? That is not a question for me to answer. Someone else will arrive shortly. You can ask them instead. All I will say is that the world is not built on correctness alone. Sometimes, being correct means nothing at all. Uh, those words you wrote among your notes. What did the line written in ancient script mean? Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. By their own choice, the idealist seeks to bring happiness to all while denying themselves the same. Thus, they shall never reach even the borders of truth until they wipe away the ignorance that blinds them. I've never been able to agree with certain philosophies. Even Sachin himself struggled to comprehend the notion of sacrificing oneself for the greater good. But sadly, all viewpoints will find their supporters, and the way we see the world largely decides our fates. Alright then, I got what I came for. These research materials are yours to look after. I'll be off. No, I don't want to read Wait, them. Wait, so you came here just to read this stuff? You missed out on a big get-together, you know. A get-together? Ah, yes, that makes sense. This is a good opportunity for that sort of thing. Guess what? Kami treated everyone this time. Then I'm sure he packed up the leftovers for me. See ya. <laughs> and there he goes. Well, it seems like he really wasn't affected by this research. He said that someone else would answer our questions. Who do you think that'll 
要比。You wait around near the obsession materials and the lines. Traveler, Paimon, you're already here. Nishida! Oh, and that guy. Wait, so you asked him to take part in the championship? <laughs> yes, it was me. Are you surprised? Actually, not really. Did you know that there was something wrong with the diadem from the start? And if so, why didn't you switch it out for another one? Because Sachin's research is not mistaken. He spent his entire life researching this topic, and these materials are a result of that. These are the crystallization of his wisdom. Yes, I was worried that the material might cause some disruption, but I didn't want to wipe away all his hard work searching for the truth. So instead, I had Hat Guy here help me keep an eye on things. Seriously? I think you can stop calling me that now. Why? Don't you like it? <sighs> well, anyway... If Sachin's chosen successor hadn't been able to handle his research, or if it had brought pain to more people, he would have intervened at a suitable moment. And after all that, the person Sachin chose turned his nose up at his life's work. Pretty hilarious. I was also hoping that this could be an opportunity for you to learn how to interact with people normally. But it looks like that didn't work out. That wasn't necessary. I'm still paying you back for your help. And the last thing I need is more reasons to be indebted to you. Nahida, what did you mean by Sachin's research is not mistaken? Does that mean that you approve of his research? Hmm, put it this way instead. Truth to me is like a shroom bore. Some people only see the mushroom on the shroom bore's back, and they conclude that the shroom bore is a mushroom. Others see only the shroom bore's body, and they declare that the shroom bore is a boar. Still others look deeper inside, and determine that the shroom bore is meat. These conclusions are all correct in their own way, but none of them objectively describe the shroom bore. Paimon kinda gets it, but also not really. The world is the same way. No one, not even I included, can understand it in its entirety. All of us are somewhere on the path toward truth. Within the confines of our limited knowledge, some may blindly believe in the beauty of this world, and others may focus only on its evils. In truth, the most important thing isn't what state the world is in now, but what people hope it will become. But of course, I don't mean that as a criticism or a call to action. Ultimately, my duty as the God of Wisdom is to guide every form of wisdom to a place where it can find its purpose. That was a long speech. So what are you actually going to do with these research materials? Because Kave has the successor of this research, does not wish to see these ideas disseminated, I will seal it up. But even though Sachin's research could be considered negative wisdom, it is still a building block of the truth. If someone wishes to follow in his footsteps in the future, I will not stop them. I also look forward to the day that a member of the Vahumana Darshan can not only comprehend his theories, but also find a way out from the despair as well. <laughs> Vahumana doesn't have that kind of talent. Wait. You're not intending to keep me in Vahumana long term, are you? <laughs> I don't remember signing up to become a scholar. Don't you think I'm useful enough to you as a prisoner? Oh boy, here we go again. You think so? Well, to that, I would say that in Sumeru, even prisoners have a right to an education. I hope that your studies in Vahumana will help you deal with your own fate, and learn how best to settle old debts from your past. I will reveal your final thesis myself. I am expecting great things from you, Mr. Hat Guy. <laughs> okay. 
get our shit. Now, I'll go back to the Bohemian. There's more stuff. Probably wish that he would be going to the Bohemian for some more time. Let's do this part of Doris. Time to go! It's a part of the same event anyway, so... And I'm here already. Time to go! Let's differ. Oh, seeing these young children, I can't help but remain sus- Oh, thanks. Uh, the International Championship has always been a stage for young talents. Unfortunately, not every genius will become successful eventually. Uh, why do you say that? Geniuses are mostly stubborn and cold, and find it hard to understand the pain of others. Empathetic people, on the other hand, often fall into self-doubt and depression. People who are not firm can only stand still, while people who are determined but walk down the wrong path refuse to look back. There's a lot to think about here. He was new. For this year's international championship, my favorite has to be Sino. Aside from his skills as General Mahmatra, looking back at the tournament's history, the Spanda Matsdarshan has the highest percentage of champions. Many people say that Spanda Matsdarshan produced many talented people, such as Cyrus, R Ruzika, Lisa, Sino. Uh, the brighter the talent, the sooner the game will lose its suspense. The most exciting competition will was still 20 years ago. At that time, my friend also participated in the game, and I went there to cheer, cheer for him. The last round was played in a video forest. In the end, no one dared to approach them, and no one knew what was going on in the depths of the forest. Then I heard the Academia shut down the competition. Later, the International Championship removed many of the events in which people fought to the death, discouraging people from being desperate enough to do so. What is your friend like? Let me think, he's honest and kind, but he's also vulnerable and sensitive. Most of all, he cares about us. When we drink together, our time is filled with laughter and cheer. It's just too bad that it's all in the past now. Among the friends we drank with, some died, some disappeared, some now live in seclusion. They say fate is fickle, perhaps it's true. Looks like something did happen 20 years ago, right? Didn't Vic Vicus tell us to seek him out if we had any questions? Now that we have time, why don't we ask him? I have erased all trace of one's existence. I have long forgotten much of the merry times during my days as a student. Even now I'm unsure of what exactly I'm reminiscing about. Perhaps I'm just reluctant to admit that I'm getting old. Actually, I think I may may get past the other the other part of the quest. Ah oh, there they are. Okay. We'll check them shortly. That incident from three years ago, what is the question? Did you hear any particular information? 
It heard that the diadem seems to have been lost 20 years ago, and some contestants' personality has changed. You seem to know a lot about that. Vikas, is there something you're not telling us? Not exactly. I was 5 years old when it happened. How could I know? But there are things I've never told anyone. I'm actually a part of the Academia Extravaganza's planning committee because of the influence of a senior colleague. A senior colleague and I met on a trip. He was a bit timid and would always flee and cover somewhere at the first sign of an emergency. One day, four years ago, I said to him, I want to go back to the Academia, the Academia Extravaganza is about to begin. And then, upon mentioning the Academia Extravaganza, he got startled and said something about it has nothing to do with me. When I said goodbye to him, he insisted on getting a drink with me. After several drinks, he started talking all sorts of nonsense. I also had too many, and in my drunken stupor, I didn't really hear him that well. I only remember that he said that he lost the diadem of knowledge for a while. He was in charge of the distribution and recovery of the diadem of knowledge. Uh, and that he nearly had a heart attack upon realizing that the diadem was missing. Fortunately, he finally found it in a tree hole. Like the one we saw before. He said that the diadem of knowledge is a very valuable treasure, which is recorded in many ancient books. Legend has it that it was built by a famous craftsman in ancient times, and carries a secret that no one knows. Sachin had entrusted the academia to safeguard the diadem after all. If my senior was responsible for the diadem's disappearance, he could not afford to pay for it with his meager wealth. Even if the loss was temporary, no one should know of it, lest the Academia find him guilty for, of gross negligence. So he covered it up? Yes, it seems that he also said that many people came to inquire about it, including children, but he said that the diadem had never been lost. But he was so scared that when things, when things blew over, he quit his job and left the Academia. I drank too much that night, and when I woke up the next day, he was gone. The more I thought about it, the more I had a better feeling that issues would crop up in the Academia Extravaganza if entrusted to someone like him. I didn't have a job at the time, so I joined the Academia Extravaganza planning committee. I tried to investigate things on the inside too, but I couldn't find anything. And the dad that was found, and the man whose personality was said to have changed was dead and there was nothing to be found. Still, 20 years is still a long time. Long enough, the people involved from the beginning no longer remember nor care. That's all I know. If you're curious, keep investigating and maybe one day you discover the truth. That's easy for you to say. We don't have much to go on. Do you have any more information? Like, where the senior colleague went? I may have heard from him. Later, I also went to the desert to look for him, but in the vast desert, it was almost impossible to run into him. To make up for it, I do have some information on Sachin. Would like to hear it? Uh, sure, tell us. When I was traveling, I did so with an Aramid commander. While we were chatting, he said he came into possession of an article written by an academia researcher. He seemed to think it was something precious and refused to show it to anyone, only to let me peek at it at my request. I only caught a glimpse of it, but I saw that it was signed by Sachin. I didn't know who Sachin was, nor did I care. After joining the Academia Extravaganza Planning Committee, I found out that he was an important member of the Vahumana Darshan, who sponsored the event. If you're interested, you can find the Aramid commander in the desert. He is usually in the Valley of Dari. Information related to Sachin. Alright, let's go take a look. Uh, the guys out here are, are close to the teleport. <laughs> it's 
Co? Słuchaj. Uh, so what do you want? Wow, this guy looks real fierce. Not oh, really. Uh, either say your peace or leave. I have no time for you. Actually, we heard that you have Sachin's art on you. So, we were wondering if you could have a look. Are you kidding me? No, why would you ask that? It seems like you guys really don't know. Some time ago, I had the article appraised. Turns out, it's nothing more than a personal travel journal. And it is of little value. He hired my father to keep him safe. That such a fellow would often walk, ask, write, and mumble. Uh, there was one time his papers were blown away by the wind. He said it was no big deal. My father, however, thought that things written by intellectuals must be valuable. So he looked around for them at night with a torch. None among my family can read. My father cherished this article and then passed it on to me. I had no idea it was completely worthless. Sounds unfortunate, but do you still have it? Yes, you want to have a look? You can look at it as much as you want. Since it's not worth anything, there's no need for me to be so stingy. Okay, unclear notes. Once the gods reign supreme, all life flocks to them like sheep seeking shepherds. Uh, and those who suffer this soul in silence. Now divine power has dwindled while human wisdom has blossomed. However, those who suffer fate, those who suffer face suffer still. Uh, there is a saying in Lewis that goes, life's like lodging at an inn. And in Azuma all things are but void. It hurts every time I read these words. I try to seek the reason for this. The wheel, of time, the wheel of time turns, and in, and the only constant, constant throughout Sumer's history is human nature. Since arriving in the desert, I have conducted a total of 64 experiments over the course of 7 years. Men are like prisoners or captured animals, feeding on each other's happiness until one is doomed to eternal torment. Therefore, where there is gain, there must be loss. Where there are, where there is happiness, there is agony. Everyone is a victim, but everyone is also a perpetrator. Greed is a numbness residing in the hearts of humanity. Driven by greed, humans choose to commit evil. A numbness is why they turn a blind eye to the evil of others. But if this is what the world is, what is then the meaning of the world? The future is to the present as the present is to the past. Peace is, was never an option. Conflict is the eternal truth. Everything from my knowledge, my wisdom to my life is but nothingness. Oh, so this is the article that such a world. Uh, to be honest, I can make sense of any of it. But judging from the crummy handwriting, Paimon can't exactly say why, but Paimon has the feeling he was going through a tough time. While well, we're done reading it, thank you very much. You're welcome. It's not worth any money, but I'm going to keep it anyway. After all, my father entrusted it to me. Come see me again if you want to look at it again. Okay, now talk to Dory. Clear weather all around, right? It's time yet again for information sale from Lord Sangama Bay. Would you two like to purchase the last, latest reports? Let me see, this information isn't that important, so you go for only half a million more. It's half the usual price, what a bargain. Mind giving it for, to me for free? Whoa, you want to bring down to zero more? Just as I expected. But I am the great lord Sangama Bay. Uh, well, since you're so interested, I'll tell you for free, but you must keep it yourselves. 
I heard that 20 years ago there was a contestant whose personality suddenly changed after taking part in the competition. Well, it looks like someone saw him in our village. I wonder where he ended up. That's all the information you, you're getting for free. If you want to hear more, you gotta pay 2 million more. I appreciate your patronage. What a ripoff. We can just go to our village ourselves and ask around. Uh, you realize too, haven't you? Twenty years ago, a young man did appear here. Back then, life was much harder than it is now. Poverty, disease, ignorance, it tormented us constantly. The young man, clearly from the academia, with a bright future, was nevertheless willing to come here and help us. He taught us how to deal with wenants and monsters. He bought us a lot of medicine with money from his own pocket. And he took care of the ill all by himself. He sounds like a great guy. Yeah, too bad he... Too bad the good Diane. He was always frowning, and no one knew what he was worried about. Everyone was wondering if he was going to leave us. This place did not have the means to properly host him. Still, many said he was a bit crazy to begin with. For example, he would sometimes tell children a story about how, as a child, he taught a strange creature to write. <laughs> Later, he would often leave the village and explore the desert. Once I asked him what he was looking for, and he said he wanted to talk to someone from the Naranga, Nagar something group. So, uh, later on, I heard that he died in the quicksand. Uh, it is said that he encountered a carbon trap in quicksand on his way to investigate something. He saved many people, but he himself wasn't able to get out in time. At that time, there was still a half-finished letter addressed to his child at home. After he died, my son took the letter with him, thinking about delivering it someday. Is that unfinished letter still here? No, it's not here. To live a better life, my son became a mercenary. He was killed in a scuffle a few years ago, and his belongings were taken. Many years have passed in blink of an eye. I wonder how his child turned out, and if they hold a grudge against him. Not many people know these things anymore. I'm getting old, perhaps I'll forget this thing soon too. Mm. So we can deliver the letter. Check the village every morning. Okay, that's yeah, he must have a lot that he wanted to save to his child. What a it's a pity that you could tell me where your son died and could try to find his stuff. you while the rest of us were eating together. I don't recall being obligated to report my whereabouts to you. Did you go find another hidey hole to read in? You need to change your ways, you know. You can't survive on books alone. Surviving on meals paid for by you would be harder still. You? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't take a genius to guess what you've been up to. 
You were investigating Sachin, weren't you? It was obvious from your notes. However, I don't believe his research alone would have been enough to pique your interest. His way of doing things is disturbing, while you... Well, to be fair, your philosophy disgusts me too, but you and Sachin are nothing alike. I don't imagine your views intersect at all. Egoism and nihilism are not the same thing. My personal interests aside, Sachin's legacy is not entirely meaningless. He conducted experiments on a great scale and left his findings behind. Also, thanks for the compliment, but I'm actually just passing through. I didn't come here for the conversation. Well, not this one at least. What do you mean? What topic of conversation could be more sacred among scholars than the exploration of differing philosophies? Well, based on what I've learned, Sachin and his disturbing way of doing things, as you put it, is very likely to have met your father 20 years ago. What did you say? Wait, so... No, surely that doesn't mean... <laughs> so that's why he thought I looked familiar. My father must have gone into the desert due to his influence. I'm afraid so. <sighs> Good thing I shattered that diadem. From now on, nothing like that will ever have to happen again. The boundaries of knowledge are ever-expanding. Someone else will inevitably pick up the same line of research one day, and Vahumana regards it as a reasonable research direction. Oh, not this again. Even if you're right and people are bound to fall into the same intellectual traps, things won't necessarily go the same way again next time. You have to admit that the actions of one individual don't always predict the behavior of the group, and vice versa. Take Sachin, for instance. He's quite an anomaly. And so is the one who stopped him. You. Conflicts of this nature are indeed exceptional, but it will occur again in the future. You said it yourself. The actions of one individual cannot predict the behavior of a whole group. You know that not everyone would have chosen as you did. Uh, even so, I stand by my views. You can forget about trying to convince me. That's fine. We've been arguing over this for years, and I don't hold any hope of you understanding. The issue we're debating has long since moved on from who's right and who's wrong. Thanks for letting me know all this. Uh, what? I said, thanks for letting me know. Hey! Stop acting like you didn't hear me! You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? They say that earnest thanks should be given thrice, so... One more time, please. <laughs> oh. Okay, now the quests are done. So, let's check the events. Okay, those are the quests. There are leaves around. And I need... Oh, uh, let's start the talk. Uh, in regards to the slave, we wonder what... Okay, she, she the same Okay, this seems simple enough. I have to walk there. Get down. Time to go. Um, no, it doesn't matter what you say. Uh, I'll actually give it a try. Sure, this one is over here. Okay. Uh, swish. Appropriate SLA parts and can I just okay, fungus? What well, like that one? Carrot. 
I'm not really. The focus was better. Ah, the height. Oh. Okay. No. Oh, look at Shell Mushroom. Okay. Um. No, not a shell. Esse símbolo. It is here, okay. Now... Okay, let's start. Missing those two. Divine tree. Done. All right. That was all. So going in order necessarily. Let's go to the closest one. Uh, what are steps? Oh yeah, I have to read probably. Well, let's get the intro steps to go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, good. In that case, lend me your ears. Part one. 
a group of horse rangers was patrolling the Avidia forest. Asi and Beijing were responsible for surveying the surrounding environment. While advancing, they discovered monsters ahead and ended up getting caught in the downpour. With the rain making the ground so muddy, they that they were temporarily stranded. Asti and Beidin out to the uh, as Saint Beidin out to the other team of Force Rangers with the intention of reminding them to stay vigilant. Then Asti hid in the tree until the monsters left. Later, following Beijing, the other team of Force Rangers successfully went the boost with Asti. Afterwards, they quickly left the force. However, of their numbers, only Beijing was soaking wet. Why was that? Part of the truth behind the story through careful analysis and questioning. Okay, we can analyze the rain was on for him. Good people travel across the mire easily. I can make both questions. Yes. No, the mire could not be traversed by human strength. Okay. The first rangers. Uh, was any waterproof gear brought along? Yes, and that's ensure that the Force Ranger's clothes will not get wet. Were Essie and Beijing far away from the other Team Force Rangers? Yes, the distance was so great that even shouts could not be heard. Were there any vision holders among those Force Rangers? No. Was everyone on that patrol f a Force Ranger? Oh, no. Okay, a new story. As we're the Force. Okay, so. Um, that could mean that painting. Okay, did they didn't have a different set of objectives compared to the Force Rangers? No. Was Beijing a Force Ranger? Beijing was not a Force Ranger, but the Force Ranger's companion. Oh. Keywords unlocked. Was Beijing higher assistance? This question, if fear has nothing to do with the story, was Beijing hostile towards Forest Rangers? This question, if fear has nothing to do with the story. Beijing's identity. Was Beijing a human being? No. Was Beijing an elemental creature? No. Was Beijing an animal? Yes. Beijing's abilities. Did Beijing carry any instruments in particular? No. Can Beijing fly? Yes. Was Beijing a vision holder? No, she already said there was nobody with a vision over there. Even if it was a human. How Beijing flies? Could Beijing use a wing glider properly? No. Do you be doing need equipment for or outside aid to achieve flight? No. Do you be fly alone? Yeah. Was flight one of Beijing's innate abilities? Yeah. Okay, so what do I how Beijing leave the mire and pass the message on? To be a shy, but being a good flyer, present mental energy by Using a special device. No. Being a flyer. Beijing was a first ranger, treasure holder, vision holder, dust bird. Well, was the was Beijing wet all over? Beijing like the rain? Beijing not bring in waterproof gear? 
with the inferno cloud and hyper vision. Do not bring any waterproof gear. Well done, you got all the issues correct. Congratulations, I definitely think you got the hang of this. So, about the next story, about the full truth behind the story. I've got a, about the full truth behind this thing. The full truth is this. Baiting was a message this bird used by the first ranger Astin. After sighting the wild beast, Astin chose to send Baiting out to inform the other first rangers due to the storm impending travel. Baiting flew through the storm and thus got all wet. Okay. So about the story. Bahera is a student from Haragatat. Some time ago, he went out for his research but received an unexpected letter from his mentor, who, in the letter, asked him to bring back something Bahera mistakenly took with him on the trip. In response, Bahera mailed the item back to Haragatat. However, when Bahera later returned to Haragatat, he still got a scolding from his mentor. Why is that? Okay. The object. Was this item broken when it was returned? No. Could this item be made through the letter? No. Yes. Okay. Was the item related to the mantle? Yes, it was something that the mentor needed urgently. Mm. Did the mentor scold by her due to a matter of lateness? No. The usage of the object. Was the item dangerous? No. Could this item be have negative impact on the academia? No. Did the item have something to do with the mentor's daily work? Yes, it was something that major use almost every day. Jackson placed on the major's work. Without the item in the letter, was the major unable to start work? Yes. Would the major lose his job without the item in the letter? No. Would the absence of the item impose a tremendous loss on her of that? The letter's current condition. Could the mentor access the location where the letter was placed? No. Did anyone else touch the letter? Yes. Was the letter delivered to her about that? Yes. Did the mentor get the letter? No. Was the location of the item related to the item itself? Yes. Mm -hmm. The people who touched the letter. There are more than one person touched the letter? No. Was the person who touched the letter a hostile to the mentor? No. Did the one who touched the letter destroy it? No. Was the person who touched the letter one of the academia's staff members? Yes. Did the person who touched the letter do something that inhibited that the mentor from receiving it? Yes, they were just performing their usual duties still. Okay, finish. I'm not quite sure about everything. Why was his mentor angry? Because he could not obtain the letter. The contents of the letter had been ruined. His plans was about to be exposed. A hero was working with the treasure hoarders. He could not obtain the letter. Who was it who last came into contact with the letter? The contact the treasure hoarders and within the academia. The Darshan staff member who was in charge of passing on the letter. The mantra. The ba Bahira. The one. Where was the letter? The major's office. It was hidden. It was with the mantra. It was destroyed. Uh, 
the major sauce. What was within the letter then? No chemical potion, the key to the office. Uh, okay. Correspondence from the treasure furnace a bill. Well, how did they put the okay they just slipped from below the the door the key well done you got other is correct congratulations i definitely think you got the hang of this what the full truth behind this is the full truth but here took the keys to the office and when his mentor sent him a letter to ask for them he sent them in a letter back to the academia However, when his letter reached his darshan, the staff member simply dropped it into Bahiro's major's office through its letter slot. Okay. As such, both the office keys and the letter one up stuck inside the locked office. Okay, so next story. Through everyone's joint efforts, the Wisdom Gala went smoothly and concluded successfully. Everyone who set up booths and offered fun events during the gala received a leave permit for a three-day vacation, no strings attached. However, after everyone got their leave permit, there was one more leave permit left in the box. Why is that? How the leave permits were to be used? Could the leave permit be given to someone else? No. Did anyone use the leave permit in advance? No. Did anyone duplicate or exchange the leave permit? No. Could somebody just not want the, the vacation? Uh, hang on. Uh, retain the leave permits. Did uh, everyone take the leave permit? Yes, okay. Did some choose different reward? No. Was anyone not allowed to claim their leave permit? No. Did some did some later have their leave privileges concealed? Cancelled. This question appears not to the story. Okay. Taking the leave permits. No no, that was keeping the leave permits. Was everyone allowed to have only one leave permit? Yes. Was everyone allowed to take only the leaf perm? Was everyone allowed to take only the leaf perm? No. Were the booth owners during the gala the only ones allowed to claim the leaf permits? This question is not to do. Okay. Or about the leaf permits. Did all the permits claimants leave with only their leaf permits? No. Were all the leaf permits taken out of the box? No. Yeah, but that was part of the question. Uh, the box that held the leaf permits. Was the leaf permit in the box still valid? Yes. Were any new leaf permits placed in the box? No. It's. Did the leave permit in the box belong to someone, nevertheless? Yes. Okay. In the current status of the leave permit is... All the leave permits are, are those who should have them. Some leave permits were damaged. Some leave permits have not been collected. Did everyone take the permit? Some chose different price. Uh, some some later had their leave permits cancelled. Everyone took a leave permit. She did say everyone took. No, but she also said different price. Oh, was one leave permit slip left in the box. Person who took the slip took the box too. Hmm. This was someone else's leave permit. This leave permit was rendered invalid. Do the box. Not bad, I think you are on the right track. One of your answers was correct. Okay. So, uh, she was going forward, I thought I was getting things right. You know, let's think about it. 
Okay. Couldn't we give it to anybody else? Can one use in the base? The duplicates. Everyone got one. Okay, nobody chose the different reward. Um, uh, the only the permit. Okay. Is so have I been collected? Or does who have them? Uh, everyone took the permit. Took the box. Uh, Reasonable answer. Oh, okay. I got all the answers correct. Congratulations on everything, but the hang of it, about the full. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the leaf permits were indeed put into everyone's hands, but the final person to take the leaf permits took the box that contained them as well. Okay. Sorry, they're all done. Oh, uh, the rewards here. Oh, who is isn't that? Ah, three steps. Uh, oh, it can be that one. Let's go. side of this mountain is actually best. Yeah, it's right there at the entrance. Okay, this one seem interesting. Let's see. Okay, and then go choose character skills or switch characters in the challenge using more the same material where to increase the construction points consumed. Okay, yeah, that's the same from all. Oh. This challenge the checkpoints are positioned in similar heights, but different locations. Perhaps using large construction materials could pave a decent path. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that just kind of irrelevant. Is that just like a floor for each walk? Can I can I jump? Uh, can I, where can I test, go to challenge, do I have a test? I don't know if I can jump, if I can jump it's, I can jump. And I can open my windows. Follow the wind. Okay, so... That makes different things. Uh, okay, okay, so. What well, left shift isn't doing anything? to not waste points but making a proper path 
should also be objective. Ah, okay, this one I can't change. Que bom, que não é. Bom, tô vendo ele só right there. Não. Slow. Yeah, just come from the city would be faster than me. Can I climb that? Let's see. Oh, uh, no, hang on. This one maybe isn't quite good yet. Okay, let's see if that works. I didn't pay attention to the points, how many I would need. Okay, but it doesn't tell me how many points. Uh, in this challenge, the checkpoints are positioned in a ring-like shape that gradually rises. Choose suitable construction materials to pave an efficient path. If I go to the top, I can just glide down. Maybe. I, I gotta see how it is. Mm, no, I probably can't. Um. Oh, I can press one of those. Oh, good. Mm. Uh. 
okay, that probably helps. For double two. Then I'm not sure if I can get there. But if I play some mushroom around here, then maybe. Let's see. Oh, that wasn't. Okay, he needs to come a bit lower. Come on, I can reach that. Yes. Let's sit there. Okay. Yeah, I should actually have made this one the last. Only two. In the sun, check points of position here. You know. At varied heights, as such, making a workable path will not be easy task. No, that's too high. I need to be able to get there. Oh, here. Move it. I think I can get there from here. No. Oh, I can probably buy something cheaper just to get there.
Okay, no, it's a bit too small. Oh, let, let's check focus. on that, so... Let's come here. I follow the wind. I can climb, climb. I follow the wind. But I would just get back to the checkpoint, wouldn't I? I can do it. Okay. That would be a bit more interesting. In, it will probably come back eventually. A bit better. Uh, you? Where's your domain? Okay, so check the others. The other one was that. Hmm. Okay, didn't spend eight hundred. Uh, what about the reaction? I think that one. Is the. Oh, there's that. Ah. Oh. Okay, complete the module of that. Okay. Let's go to the area to explore. Wherever in this world. It's uh, here. Oh, uh, I gotta click that item. I didn't even check it. That. I didn't quite get it. When they go lower. Providing cover 
Oh, I need. Ready for trial. The main which should look for the rough location where the replicas the location with the police search compasses. Don't forget to clear any obstacles to the main search compasses. Search compasses. Okay, they aren't really pointing anywhere. No, those things change along with the camera. Ah, where are they? Follow the wind. Pointing somewhere. Or they just place based on where I was facing. Oh. Yeah, I removed the first one. In the garage, to retreat, to retreat. I thought the percentage would be higher, closer to where the thing is. Oh, okay, there are two. Yeah, that's why. I, I didn't notice there was two. Time to go. That's why the number here was higher. Time to go. Okay, this could have a button around here to just focus the map. Uh, yeah, I won't obey it. Okay. There are leaves around. Oh. 
motion to compel. Too long for a crack. Delve into destiny. Wind strike. Boom! Boom. Time to go. Time to go. Yeah. Incinerate. Gears of the storm. Shadows of fate. Time to go. That's nice. Time to go. Take me out of the area. Clouds high. The birds. Boom, boom. Wind strider. Is that that okay? Let me scry. Decided by destiny. Okay. 
Let's just do them. They're probably part of that. There's no you go. Motion to compel. Back of the flame. Too late for regret. Okay, you know, a quest. Mm. Clear weather all around brightens the heart. Time to go. So, oh, have fun with the Repcus. Please, hmm. Repka, I think. Ah, then in blue, and purple. So, marvelous. You really do have a knack for this, don't you? Well, then, this gift for you. Thanks for taking part in the events organized by our dark shop. I hope that you've been able to enjoy your taste of archaeology, Traveler. That said, real life archaeology tends to be rather dry and labor intensive work. But the instant you find that key relic, you feel as if the struggle was well, all worth it. And if you fail to dig anything up, I'm quite sure there are situations in which you find nothing. Well, if we don't find anything, then this is, as they say, a waste of effort. And to be honest, this is actually what happens more often than not. The instances where we do find something important are quite rare indeed. But to work in archaeology is to be used in but to work in archaeology is to be used to such circumstances and stay optimistic even so. It would be a matter of time. It will only be a matter of time before we collapse otherwise. What did I get? Oh. The smog is from Danny, from the exterior, it looks like some kind of intricate compass. According to Danny, this compass has been made more aesthetics in mind than practicality. Oh. Let's see, we still got some things here. Okay, we will try. All right, in that case, we'll step over here. Let's hear replication weasel. Pretty calibration. Oh, there's written. Well, I mean, yeah, let's see. I never really needed it. Every time I tried, it was already well synced. Oh. Ah, me. Or maybe I tried to be Just jump at the right moment to control the weasel model to obtain coins at the appropriate reaching point. Just leap to teach to reach coins at higher location.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, 100%. That's it. Do I need a 100% in everything? I don't know how will the next ones be. Yeah. From war. Okay. Oh, uh, use for charge at the right moment to cause the Schwimbor motor to break the obstacle at the appropriate reaching point. Oh, oh that was a tutorial. Oh. We try. Okay. I thought it would be a bit longer. Yeah, he is as the music goes. No, oh, come on, no, no. Uh, I wonder if I'll with the music. Cool, but Bertha means we're too close to comfort. Sleep from water at the right moment and control the fish model so the duration of its jump matches that of the other two fish.
Oh, we missed twice. Let's go again. Oh, I didn't notice there was a line here. Then we managed to catch this fish. It sure bread about it for a long time. Let's go again. I won't miss one twice. So yeah, it's quite like you didn't have them. Okay. Yeah, but this one seems a bit harder than the others. Okay, now points, points, points. Okay, now that one go to challenge. It's not here, is it? Hmm. Oh, the base I can't teleport you. Everybody's naive. Hmm. Uh, resilient concussions. HP on opponents. HP will be increased. Oh, I need to. Okay. And this shield waves that the damage. Most of my have been deployed. Head to berserk. Head to shooter. Um, each opponent is usually 15% for each normal opponent in the field every 10 seconds. That one and that one. The haste. When there are less than two opponents near the character, more attack. Uh, when the character hits the field, each opponent exert true damage. Oh, this is the fish shock wave. We actually can turn attack hits an opponent, the second one will be generated. Uh, okay. Hmm. Okay, no, not you guys. Uh, No, not you. He's usually being put here. In you. <laughs> well, this ought to be entertaining. Another lag to beat. Okay. Shine down. 
Cut! Hit the fallen leaves. Adorn my... Mind the damage. I'll uproot you! I hear everything! Wind strider! Chop! As one with wind and cloud! What a drag! Now you shall perish! Kamisato Ar. Suyu! Let's nip that in the butt. Flowers have. Yeah. There is no escape! Clouds high. The birds call! Be still. Illusion shattered! Torn to oblivion! Mind the damage. There is no escape. Fallen leaves adorn my night. Oh no, he died. Yeah. I'm probably not that. Shockwave. Oh, do I have to go out and heal them? Oh, damn it. Okay, let's just get Johnny and then we're good to go. Same ones, okay, the one and the one, next, the one and the one, no, the one. Mix it up. Uh, yeah, um, you, you, and now you. What shall we do? Illusion shut! Gather! Wind strike! Clouds high! Birds. I hear everything! One with the force! Keep up! This is order. Shine down. Wind strike. Shut. Fallen leaves. Adorn my and shroud. Yeah. Let's nip that in the butt. Stabilize. Order guide you. Shut. I hear everything. As one with wind and cloud. I will have order. Solidify. There is no escape. Torn to oblivion. Can't see? Let's nip that in the butt. Illusion shattered. Yeah. Yeah, much better.
Hmm, prop doesn't matter. Same thing as before. Uh, which provides no fuel, increase components, increase in resistance, increase by 300, opens more life. Uh, where it forms a very base by a large crowd of slimes. Okay. Elemental load will be in challenge, you require a buff, nearby points in intervals. And can be removed by. Okay, this probably be even faster. Hang on, cryo. No, oh, can I go back? Brilliant cryo fungus. That's the small. Uh, really cryo fungus. Okay, if it was the chicken thing, I I think I would prefer the large cryo slimes. Um, uh, recharge quickly haste jumping builds. Uh, when character takes damage, their attack does it count with the shield? Uh, when we deal with pyro, we don't have pyro, so... I don't really... Uh, I don't know if the position for hitting points. Okay, it's basically everybody is a Kazuha. I don't know. I... Yeah, I'm, I'm using Kazuha. I'm, I'm getting... Is it that all the time? Damage recharge will probably give me plenty of skills to use. Shine down. Use it. Wind strike. Clouds high. The birds come. Sir. I'll uproot you. Order guide you. Stabilize! Wind strike! Shot! Falling leaves! Adorn my- Inazuma shines eternal! As one with wind and cloud! I will have order! Yeah, go on, go on. Solidified! And shroud! There is no escape! Torn to oblivion! <laughs> Let's nip that in the butt! <laughs> Can't see? <laughs> Illusion! <clears throat> Insulin! Order guide you! Stabilize! Fallen leaves! Adorn my knight! <laughs> there is no escape! Inazuma shines eternal! And shroud! Humans. Uh, each normal opponent in the field increases each opponent's physical and elemental resistance. Each opponent's are my scorch and learn master. The mind can manage to spirit army immediately when taking the field. Opposing reinforcement have been deployed. Are my ex vanguard are my in beak. And treasure harder power. Okay, your active character will be paired completely with smoking flames. Okay, that and that. When character HP is higher than 70% in Metro Mastery, operate healing bonus. I don't have healer. Shield. Character is quicken. Is that bloom. Uh, time for bloom. I'm going to HK. Okay, gain okay. 5 elemental energy. Okay, I'll just get more energy, elemental energy. That'll probably be better. Are they still they aren't max health, are they? Oh they are. Shine down! 
Clouds high. But first, I will have order. Lucky today. Wind strikers. Can't see. I'll uproot you. There is no escape. Gather. Fallen leaves. Adorn my one with the force. Welcome. I'm getting sick of this. Let's nip that in the bud. This is order. Solidify. Dance with me. Now you shall perish. Illusion shattered. And shroud. Clouds high. The birds, I'll uproot you. Care for a chance? Your coming was for told. I will have order. Inazuma shines eternal. Where the eat just with me. The I hear everything. Just begun. Good. And with that, we're done. Okay. Now, here. What are those? Ah, oh, just the flags, okay. Cool. Um, nice. Let me fix the party to what I have before. It is as the stars foretold. Oh, there she is. Yeah. All right, and with that, we're done. Let's spin the one we just got. Okay. And let's try to get one by you. No. Scenery is oh, wonderful. Right. Surely enough to convince. Okay. Uh, there's this thing going on. I'm not sure I'm gonna play live. One for this should go. But it's just battling with other people, isn't it? So, yeah, I'm not sure if I can skip that one. And go to the new visual quest here. Well, okay. Uh, today I'm done. And I'm out.